welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're watching us again this week. We're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in the issues that are happening in our cities. If you haven't watched us before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to update us on what's happening in that city and what's going to come about in the months ahead. From time to time, we'll bring programs to you that show things about our cities, and that's what we're going to do tonight. So we're very happy tonight to welcome Adrian Moy and Joni Claussen. They're Thank from you. the Golden Valley Pride Festival C Committee. Or Correct. I think the committee, right? Yes, okay. it is a committee. And so we're very glad to have them with us. And all of our cities have festivals, and it's a really good time for people to get together, to celebrate something about the city, to intermingle and get to know other people, anyway, to create community. And this program, we're going to kind of look behind the scenes of what does it take to put a festival like this together. And I asked each of you to kind of think of a little introduction about your time in the city. And I'll, we'll start with Adrian and okay. introduce yourself to our audience. My name is Adrian. I have been a resident of Golden Valley for the last 14 years. And my involvement with the Golden Valley Pride Festival started when, on the second year, I was asked to help with the signage. Um, as a career, I do signs and displays for a living. And so when the Golden Valley Pride Festival uh, was on its second year and it was going to grow into a larger venue of sorts, a festival, they wanted more signs. So I started doing more signs um, with the Golden Valley Pride Festival and that's kind of where I started with it. Ah. Again into year three right. and then now into year four and now with that became a bigger, broader sense sure. of the festival itself to use myself as a voice for the festival more than just signage right. but to actually get out and engage with the people. Right. And, and the whole festival is run by volunteers, right? Yes, we are all volunteer based. Okay. And Joni? Well, first, before I get started, I'd really like to thank you uh, from the committee of the Golden Valley Pride Festival to have us here tonight and kind of thank put you. out our message right. and what we have to offer. But I'm Joni Claussen, and I'm also from Golden Valley. My parents moved to Golden Valley when I was a year old, so I've been there almost as uh, long as the farmers, but um, I grew up there. And currently I'm on the Golden Valley City Council and involved in many activities, liaison to different commissions. I'm also a, a board and commission member oh. here at uh, CCX Media. I love Golden Valley. When this opportunity with the uh, uh, Golden Valley Pride Festival came, I jumped right on mm -hmm. to celebrate the diversity that we have in our city. Right. It's been awesome. I've been there since the very beginning. Uh -huh. There's three of us members here from the first, what they call the steering committee back right. in that day. And it's been an honor. It's been uh, educational and it's been very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, can you tell us why you got involved originally? Well, yes. Yeah. Because we're, we're always telling people out in the community to get involved in their cities, so it helped to give a little reasoning to that somebody might think about and maybe they'll join your committee. Yeah, so initially to have more people power is uh -huh. definitely important. When you have a volunteer committee, it takes just the right amount of people right. firing in all the avenues of, of what they're good at right. to make all the things happen. And so you need all those moving parts, you need all those moving people to help keep it going. That's number one. Number two, uh -huh. like Joni said, the movement itself celebrating diversity and that was a cause that was very good uh, I didn't say before but I was also on I am on the Golden Valley Community Foundation oh, yeah. and now West St. Paul wants to get me on board as well as Bloomington uh -huh. so all these cities are really starting to spark right. because of this they're seeing what we're doing here in Golden kind Valley cool. as the little sibling to yeah. the Twin Cities Pride Festival so it's really igniting a really great message across oh, all the cool. cities and well, what about you Joni well, it started out with our founding father, I call Peter Knebley, Okay. putting an email out on Facebook to see how the interest would, you know, if right. you get any interest. And I signed up immediately uh -huh. to be part of it. And it just kind of grew from there. Mm -hmm. I just uh, was really excited about it. And we just took um, steps from the very good, little by little right. until uh, we got enough members 
to get it started. And really, after uh, the first year we had it, we started in January. But right. I got involved because I just thought this would be a great event for our community. Right. And Golden Valley has the highest number of per capita gay couples than any other city in yes. Minnesota. So this was kind of a natural for yeah, our... A good fit. Yeah, it was a good fit for our community. Mm -hmm. I will switch and talk a little bit about the history of the <coughs> festival. Um, when did the idea of the Pride Festival come up? Just it was. I think you just told me the answer, right? It was one person who thought this would be something good for your city. Right, in the fall of the year before okay. we uh, started, he came out with this. And then we had another council member, Larry Fonis, uh -huh. who is gay. He signed up and uh, we had eight members. Okay. And Larry Fonis, myself, Jonathan Burris, Teresa and Aaron Black, Kimberly Sandberg, and Shannon Black. And that was our first committee. Uh -huh. Yeah. So people out there, if they've got some fun of what they want to do, it doesn't take a huge amount of people. I mean, eight people is a goodly amount to give of volunteers, right? But still, that it doesn't take a huge amount of people to, to get something started. Well, it did, we did have a few other people that came to start, uh -huh. but they kind of fell off to the uh -huh. side. and. But these eight stuck it out, ah, right. and it was kind of the blind leading the blind <laughs> right. at first, right. you know, and putting the pieces together. So here on year four, we're now at 13, 13 people on our committee. Ah, so yeah. it went from eight to 13 right. within four years. So a couple added, but it still right. is not right. massive. It's not massive. No. We did so it's some. important for people to know that. Yeah, right. And we did lose some of those founding members because they're busy, and but we were we gained new members right. to take their yep. place. Yep. Now, all of our cities in this northwest corner of the city are getting more diverse in many different ways. What are some ways that Golden Valley has been working through that? This is one way, but what are some other things that, they, that you've been doing in Golden Valley? Well, one thing I'd like to bring up, this festival is not a part of the city. Right. And I, and got that I later did, on, sir, right? I, you know, I'm serving on the council when this came forward. And even though I was on the committee, I did not believe that it should be part of the city right. only because if any other groups uh, came forward, the Latinos, the blacks, the whatever, right. we would have to do the same for every single group. Uh -huh. And affordability is a problem so we are our own entity right. we have the support but we pay for everything all the permits everything so we're not actually part of the city right. but our city is doing many many things we have a new rising tides task force right. for equality that will not just look in what can we do as a city but in our contracts how we do business, uh -huh. and it's a year-long um, task force, and we'll come together at, with this task force and have a new direction for our city on many different uh -huh. avenues. But we're ve looking very hard at the diversity that we have because we have changed over the years oh, greatly, greatly, and we need to address those issues yeah. And so I think uh, this um, Tides Task Force, it's really one of the first oh. out there. So we're really proud of it. And it won't be till next um, late fall or beginning winter when we'll really put everything that they've right. discussed and see what direction we're going in. Are there any things that you've noticed that have been changing as time has gone by? Well, we're getting a lot more art projects happening. Ah amongst the city um, with the Brookview Center being oh, right. remade right. and then um, the Golden Valley Community Foundation is branching off into many different mm -hmm. facets like the, Go the Golden Global mm -hmm. Community, there's the Market in the Valley, the Art and Music Festival, yeah. and then there's another one that's coming up that I'm not going to say anything about because until it really gets its, oh, yeah. its feet on the ground, I don't want to know until it's going to launch itself. So right. we're branching yeah. out in these different areas oh, and really right. making sure that the community is involved. Um, those are festivals. Okay. What is the one that we do? The music in the park? 
Isn't that a regular thing all the time that as well? That is sponsored by the city, yes. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's and something that's, uh, it's a, it's a ongoing thing throughout the summer, spring, right? Uh, uh, the art and music festival? No, the music in the park. Oh, that's all, I'm sorry, yeah, I misunderstood every... that. That goes on um, all summer. Right. And they have uh, different bands and uh -huh. orchestras, and that um, is probably Monday night tonight. Actually. And movies yeah. as well too, don't they do movies <laughs> they, in the park as well? We've gotten Monday uh, movies and uh, ice cream socials, mm -hmm. and we do a lot of activities yeah, during really you know with our city. Right. And one of the successes is um, the Golden Valley Foundation because without them. This festival probably would not have taken place because of insurance costs. Oh, and, right. Uh, so they're really one of the reasons we were able to, uh -huh. you know, be successful at this because trying to raise money is not that oh, easy right, with insurance right. and everything. So we've really um, depended on them and they've really followed through for us. So there's been a lot of things that Golden Valley has been trying in many different ways, I think. And then this is a good addition to all Absolutely. those other things. A growing addition. Right. What would you say, and maybe there isn't one, the primary purpose of your Pride Festival is? I believe there is one. Do you want to give an answer? Or you I think the primary pur uh, purpose is to celebrate the gay members mm -hmm. of our community. Uh -huh. And this started out for a celebration with Golden Valley for our residents. But it has grown where people are coming now from all over. Cool. And uh, so like the first year we had maybe 2,500, now we've had about 5,000. Ah. And so it's a celebration of our gay community, but really it's ending up a celebration of the gay community uh -huh. itself. Yes, and, and on top of that, I'd also say m more than a celebration indeed, a celebration of festival, right. but also it's, it, it's an acknowledgement. Oh, it's right, saying to the Pride right. community, you are allowed to be who you are. Huh. And that's the whole celebration of diversity. Whether right. you're a man, a woman of whatever ethnicity or any right. gender association or whatever religious yoke you have, you are allowed to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And so this is one day during the month of right. Pride Month that our organization in the city of Golden Valley right. says, we're going to throw a festival in honor of you. Ah, so it's, yeah. a, it's a celebration, it's a, an acknowledgement, and it's, it's paying honor oh, right. to people being themselves. And I think people are looking more and more for a sense of community. Don't Absolutely. You think? Support, that's what community I've been support. Noticing. And I, I, I'm not sure how further on in the interview this goes, but when we get to our sponsors, Mm -hmm. Having their involvement because that really tells the community as well. Hey, we're here with you guys. Right. That's right. huge when we get those bigger right. companies Definitely. involved. Definitely. And I think one of the other interesting things is our committee isn't just gay people. It is also people oh, that yeah, are straight. Whole, and so right. we're all working allies. together. Yes, we're yeah. allies. Now, one of the things you have is you have several events happening. So there's like things for the whole range of everybody in your family, right? How did you decide on, in, as you've been going along, what events to do, what, mm -hmm. what, what to put into this right. festival? Well, the, inclusion, the, the inclusivity of the festival itself, which we've been deemed as the family-friendly uh -huh. version of a Pride Festival, kind of just befell upon us, not that we pushed for that as right. a thing. It just ended up happening because it was in the park, it was in the neighborhood where there were the most uh, pride couples right. per capita. And so they got to it. And so we didn't really go as far above and beyond that that it never crossed our mind to have a lot of illuberance or extravagance or oh, pomp right. and circus. You know, it was right. just more like we're going to have a gathering. Okay. And so then from the gathering, we're like, okay, what things can engage people? And so when you think right. about that, you say, okay, you're going to get a crowd of people here. What's an engaging thing? Yeah. Well, you have people that want to get in there and make sure that you have handicap accessibility. So that oh, kind of right. covers a very right. big, broad range. Definitely. Then you have couples, adults, business uh -huh. people. So what do they want? They want to have a good time. They want to have great food, which right. is awesome. They want to have good music. Right. The park makes a lot of shade and oh, sunny right. spots. So it's very nice to not just be in a spot where you're getting beaten down by the yeah. sun or cold because there's not sun. You have the variety. Children is the lawn activities, mm -hmm. face painting. Um, again, with the food, there's a lot right. of desserts and things that go on. And then 
on top of all of that, this year we're getting more lawn activities, ah. which is engaging for adults as well. Because oh, sure. think about it, people come to the festival and they say, okay, we're here, we're gonna show our support, we're gonna walk around and look at some of the art and the vendor booths, we're uh -huh. gonna eat some of the food. We do have beer and wine, which is a very big right. seller as well because people can imbibe on that level if, yep. they're, if they want to. Um, and then, then the kids have the bouncy houses. So oh, we're right. thinking- Kids always like those. They love that. <laughs> so we're thinking, what can we do to keep the adults uh -huh. more engaged? Because as the adults, if you have kids, right. you know, now you're like, okay, we've been here for an hour. Uh -huh. Or an uh -huh. hour and a half. Now right. what do we do? Yeah. So now we're going to get more everybody inclusive uh -huh. lawn activities so that people can be more engaged. Now what's going to- Now you've got a lot of events. The first one was the worship service in the morning. Correct. Had, I've got 10 a.m., yep. right? That's right. So, and that's taken care of by the churches in your community from what I just heard you say, right? Well, um, that's changed a little over oh, time oh, okay. too because some churches were mad they weren't going to be able to have it at their church, oh. but that's so far away. Oh, yeah. And so they kind of dropped out. But, and that's um, a logistical issue when it comes to organizing oh, something. Of yep. So they said, of okay, was it was it six or five? Because I thought at one point it was six churches that were We had four. Right? Four. Okay. four. Okay, so you have these different denominational churches, right. Right. and they're all agreeing to do an interfaith service. Uh -huh. And so when, the, when one of them said, hey, I want to do it at mine, we actually danced through the idea. What happens when people go further away from the park yeah. to have the service, and then how do they get back yeah. to the park when yeah. the park is closed off now? Yeah. And so we said, okay, we could just have it in the park. Oh, right. Well, having it in the park means that we have to have more security, which is more funding, because oh, now right, we have to have the right, police task right, yeah. on earlier than normal. Yeah. So we said, let's just keep it at Spirit of Hope. Mm -hmm. Well, that made them upset, because mm -hmm. now they felt like we weren't sharing the congregation. Yeah. And so that was a logistical thing oh, right. that came to so, organizing the interfaith service part. Yeah, that you had to work with We your had way to work through, through. It. and right. so the answer just kind of was we really need to keep it close to the park. Yeah. And it's not about the denomination no. of who is doing the thing. Well, they didn't want to see it that way, so we said, well, we can't help you see it. No. And we can't you have to do your best. We did, yeah, and we and did. We can only do so much. Right. Yep. And they made the decision, and they were all awesome churches. Yes, absolutely. And they really did put their heart into yep. it. But we also have the festival that we that want to the bring focus. these people yeah, the right, right. to the festival. And if it's uh, five or seven minutes away across town. It's hard to we, get everybody from the service yeah, back to is, the festival. It though. is. No, I can see that. And then you mentioned some of the activities for children, but it goes on from 12 till about 6, I think. Correct, 12 from, to 6 is. From the schedule that I was looking like. <clears throat> Maybe you can talk a little bit more about the children's activities. You mentioned some of them. Did we get through all of them or not? What well, we guys? have the two bouncy houses, and okay. one is an obstacle course. Okay. And so that's the big one. Uh -huh. Then we also have a giant uh, Jenga. Is that how you yes, say it? Yes, we have it? giant Jenga. And there's a huge tower, but that's those where you put the wood and then it falls over, you know, when it reaches a certain oh, point. Oh, okay, right. And so we have a giant one of those, a giant Yahtzee game huh. with big um, dice. Uh -huh. We have a corn haul, which is when you throw the bean bags. Uh -huh. And um, some of these adults can do as well. Right. And then um, the Twins and United... Uh, FC are also going to be doing some children's oh, games, but fun. we're really not sure what those yeah. are. Okay, wait. I wouldn't say the children games. I will definitely be in line of the twins and the soccer <laughs> arena to do whatever games yes. they bring. Yeah. Unless that just means I'm a big kid because I can yeah. be right up there with yeah. them. Yeah. And so we're so really <laughs> excited yeah. to have oh, the that twins. That's yeah. big. That's that huge. is right. That's fun. And uh, because some of those, the first years kind of turned us down. Yeah. And so it's exciting that they're participating right. in this. And they want to, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. they love it. And we want them to, <laughs> too. <All right. laughs> and then you've got community booths. And you talked a little bit about you've got two different kinds of booths <clears throat> in one area, right? So maybe talk a little bit about. Do you, what, do you, what do you know about that? Because We from have my, about yeah. 40, 45 booths this year. No, we're up to up 70, to, 80. Yeah. In a week? Yeah. We have 70, 80 booths. Okay, well, okay. from the last meeting I heard, um, so we have 70 or 80, that's yep. big. That's good. That's yep. big. And we have um, community groups that okay. come in. The city of Golden Valley uh -huh. has one. Um, we'll have realtors yeah. or 
Um, farmers market is going to yeah, be there. Yeah, farmers market. Oh, right. And we have some artists that uh -huh. come in because they have the free. Every anyone oh. can come in, so it's uh -huh. not just community and right. announcement. Right. And you know, here's a public service announcement or an awareness of my company. Place. And, and so each group gets a space, and they bring their own setup. That is Ten. correct. Okay. Yeah. At this point, yes, because there are festivals where people offer tables and chairs right, and tents. Right, right. We're not at that level yeah. yet, so they bring their own. So they're basically when they sign up to be part of the festival, they're purchasing that spot. Right. It becomes their plot of land. Right. And then we actually have a gentleman who's on our committee who manages that. Ah, so yeah, all the way that, to the right? bitter end, right, all the way to the very bitter end, he's sitting there mapping out where uh -huh. everyone's going to be. And he actually has to field phone calls of people saying, hey, can I be this? Uh -huh. Can I be over here? Can yeah. I get that? So that's quite a task in oh, itself, yeah, I would organizing think so. all the tents. And but costs, people always enjoy going up and down and maybe finding something to purchase. Right, or yeah. Learning more about an organization. Yep. It costs a hundred dollars if you're like a nonprofit or uh -huh. a community, and it's two hundred dollars if you are a business. So that kind of helps fund part of the funding process. Yeah, absolutely, yep. That yes. goes into our ability to put back into the festival. Right. That all goes right back into it. But it's fun because people have something to do, and as we, if we have eighty, that's really awesome because it'll go down the whole sidewalk. Correct. Uh -huh. And um, from the north to the south. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And gives people, you know, a chance and they give little free things away. Right, and, right. You know, they can talk, you know, to different groups if they mm -hmm. have questions and it's it's fun. Oh yeah, I would yeah. think so. And then food trucks. You also gonna have food trucks there and I I was just sharing earlier. That's such a fun thing that's come up in the city's area so over the, the past what, five years? Yes. Yes, and the food trucks that we have this year, I'll just right. list them out. We have, so they're not all food. Some of them are stationary. Oh, sure. So we have, I hope we get to have Milton's this year. <laughs> okay. Um, New Bohemia, Fabled Rooster, and that's kind of like a, Fabled Rooster is like a, like a barbecue type oh. style place. Uh, Rebel Lobster, uh -huh. that speaks for itself. Yeah. As well as El Burrito Mercado, Earth, Wild Earth Wood Fire Pizza, mm. Froyo Soul, which is frozen yogurt. We have a cupcake company coming, um, and then Sebastian Joe's is going to be oh. selling a special Pride ice cream uh -huh. at the festival. That also, and then all those donations are going back into the festival right. as well from Sebastian Joe's. Uh -huh. um, and then Culver's, who also works with the Rotary, uh -huh. they sell their custard ice cream, and then okay. they use the proceeds from that that get matched by another organization, and that goes back into um, helping homeless. Youth, uh -huh. Homeless uh -huh. Pride Youth. Oh, okay, so it's kind of a outreach from your outreach, right? right absolutely. <laughs> so it's really great how you know a few of these are just going right back into right. it. But then again, also having this variety of food oh, yes. is very good because you know I remember it was on the second year there were three food trucks. Okay. And the lines were huge. Oh, and yeah. so then on the third year, we had five. Yeah. And those lines were still, yeah. they were better. Yeah. And a lot of people were running out. So this year, we're like, we're just going to light it up. Because, right. you know, those guys, they run out every time. So the food truck right. people, they, they run out of food. Then you know that's giving you a signal, right? Right, how well we're doing. <laughs> right, Absolutely. Right. You know, when you go from, what did you say, 2,500 in the first year to between five and six on the third year, yeah. we'll yeah. see what this turnout is. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. Great. And Byerly's also comes. They don't oh, thank bring, you. Yes, they sorry. They don't bring food, but they do give water. Yeah, and uh, free water. They give some free things. Uh -huh. And um, I do have to say, they have been a great sponsor. Yes. Not just to um, the Pride Festival, but to Golden Valley mm -hmm. Human Services Foundation as well. And so I want to give a shout out to them. <laughs> oh, yes. And then the only thing we haven't talked about yet is your beer and wine garden. And then there's it's something involved with the local brewery, right? So tell me about it. Do you want to, okay, so for the beer and wine garden, first year that we did that was just beer. Uh -huh. We didn't have wine. And then the second time last year we had wine as well. So this is being hosted by Utapos Brewing Company. And they're gonna have four beers this time. Mm. Yeah, so it's quite the variety. And you know as far as beers go, they have their dark lager right. to their nice pilsner and so, and they have their own signature ones. One of them is a lemonade uh -huh. flavored beer this year, mm. so that's going to be really that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, and then the wine, there's three wines. We're going to have uh -huh. a Cabernet, a Chardonnay, and a Malbec. And in the beer is a local brewery? Udipose is a local Golden okay. Valley brewery. Yep, they're right off of Glenwood just before Penn, is that? Uh. Penn is a major intersection, so yeah, they're still within the Golden Valley 
part of the Golden border. Valley neighborhood, right? Absolutely, yeah. I bet that is a popular place too. It is, it is. It's a very, and that's where we have done um, celebrations and parties, uh -huh. like pre-Pride parties and post-Pride parties. Oh, sure. And they let us bring our tents and oh. sell our merch in there and do special events yeah. there as well, which will all be on our Facebook page. Right. We you did have a very have, good Facebook page. We Thank did you. not have beer and wine the first year, uh -huh. just because we you didn't know. Well, we thought about it, uh -huh. but we weren't quite ready to take on that. Yeah, um, would it, what would it endeavor, and how could it what, work out? Licensing. Right. Who do you get to do it? How do you yeah. organize it? Who and, operates it? Yeah. That's another and, thing. Getting the operations for all these things. Oh right. And the uh, we have a great logo. I uh -huh. love our logo. Yeah, it is very and, good. Uh, this year, if you buy beer for twelve dollars, you get that mug if you want, and and then you have it. Otherwise, I think it, it might be. What is it? Is it an, it's, it's aluminum or is it stainless steel? It's stainless what is it? steel. Oh, stainless steel. Walled. So huh. what I do with that thing I love uh -huh. is, is you stick it in your freezer. And then you chill it oh, yeah. yep. for like you know 15 minutes right, before you pour right. your drink in it, and then your drink is really oh, nice and nice icy and cold. cold. Yeah. Right. And this year with our new wine, uh, uh -huh. this is brand new. But I think it could also be a sippy cup for little kids. Right. <laughs> oh, it probably could. It right. doesn't have to be right. wine. It's got yeah. the little yeah. rubber stopper on and it. And that's a double walled Isn't as that well. Pretty? And so this is something new for the wine that uh -huh. we did not have last right. year. Yeah, trying things out over time lets you know what works good or what you might not right. want to do the next year, right, right? right? And then the other part of the activities is from 12.25, and it looks like they're each, what, about 45 minutes long, roughly, right. yep. until 5 p.m., there's going to be different musical groups. Right. Can you tell us what the names of some of them and tell us what a little bit about what kind of music? Right, so yeah, I, I can, and I'm actually very excited this year. The very first thing after our opening ceremony uh -huh. that we do to kick off the festival, right. we're going to have a group called the JTR, and mm -hmm. they're a, a junior dance group. Oh. And so they're going to do a little dance number, and it's uh -huh. going to be a choreographed, really fun first group. And it's uh -huh. just, it's a, they're a really good, good dance group. And then we have Aaron Schwab. And then, Joni, if you want to jump in and say what you know as far as what music genre these people are. Well, you know what? During the festival, I'm running all over, so <laughs> I, I, I don't know I if I would say I there's a lot of rock. Really there's a lot of okay. pop. It's a okay. lot of rock and a lot of pop. Uh, no. but and it goes back and it. forth. There's some They're jazz. So yeah. yeah, there's there's some jazz. Um, so Aaron Schwab and the Jay Fuchs Band, Ovation, Roxy Hall Band, Out Loud, Cassano and the Vibes. Say that for me, please. Calliope? I don't know. Calliope? The Women's, Women's Choir, Audra and the New Black. Oh. So for the community people that know those bands, they'll know exactly right. what I'm talking and about. And lots of different groups. Correct, yeah, and it is a, quite a variety. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's really good because... Um, there's some grass people, funk in Right, there. if they want to stay for a while, they have a variety and interest, and they can go over to the food court, they can go get their beer and wine, then right. they can come and right. listen to the music. Well, I want to thank both of you so much. Thank you very much, for Bonita. It's been an honor lots, to be here. Lots of information and enthusiasm yes, indeed. about the process. And I was very happy when you were going to come on because we haven't done anything like this program. We've talked about farmer's markets, but this is a whole different thing, right? But to encourage people in the other cities, too, that if you've got an idea that you'd like to celebrate for your city, take all these ideas and try. So what